Over 1,000 oak trees were cut across France just to rebuild a roof that no longer exists. Not just any roof, but one that burned in just hours after standing for over 800 years. The Notre Dame Cathedral fire shocked the world in April 2019, but what followed was even more unbelievable. Engineers used 3D laser scans, medieval techniques and hand-cut limestone to recreate a structure once thought impossible to restore. A spire nearly 100 meters high was rebuilt beam by beam, with lead sheets hammered by hand. Over 500 artisans worked day and night, guided by data and history. How exactly do you restore a medieval building using tools from the past and tech from the future? Notre Dame de Paris isn't just a church. It's a 12th century time machine built of stone, wood and light standing at the eastern tip of Ile de la Cité in the heart of Paris. It's one of the most iconic examples of Gothic architecture in the world. The idea began with Bishop Maurice de Sully around 1160. He dreamed of replacing two earlier churches with a single cathedral. The first stone was laid in 1163 by Pope Alexander III. What followed was nearly two centuries of construction. Piece by piece, Notre Dame came alive. The choir, the nave, the facades, the towers each took decades to finish. Its west facade, built in the early 1200s, is a carefully balanced structure where three arched portals support two giant towers. Inside, ribbed vaults stretch like arms to the heavens. The stained glass rose windows, glowing with 13th century glass, fill the church with kaleidoscopic light. Its flying buttresses hold the walls in place while letting in sunlight and air. Notre Dame wasn't only an architectural marvel, it became a cultural and political symbol. Napoleon crowned himself emperor here. Victor Hugo brought it fame with his novel. Tourists came from around the globe to stand under its ancient vaults. But everything changed on April 15, 2019. Fire ripped through its attic. The wooden roof structure, nicknamed the forest, collapsed. The 19th century spire, designed by Violet Le Duc, fell. Vaults cracked. The damage was massive. Yet the walls stood. The rose windows survived. And immediately a decision was made. Notre Dame would be rebuilt. But this wouldn't be a normal restoration. This was going to be a test of engineering and history. How do you bring an 850-year-old cathedral back to life? Right after the flames were out, the first step wasn't building, it was saving what was left. The fire burned for over 15 hours on April 15, 2019. When it was finally over, the cathedral was in bad shape, fragile and dangerous. The roof was gone, huge parts of the ceiling had collapsed. The tall spire from the 1800s had fallen straight through. The stone walls were blackened and cracked. Scaffolding surrounded everything like a twisted metal cage. There were over 40,000 pieces of scaffolding, bent, melted and hanging in place. All of it had to be taken down carefully, piece by piece, without breaking anything below. But how do you clean up something so big, so damaged, without making it worse? That's where technology came in. Robots and drones were brought in, not just to take pictures, but to do real work. Remote-controlled machines picked through the rubble. They lifted heavy, burnt beams. They vacuumed up dangerous lead dust. Every stone that had fallen was collected. Every nail, every broken piece of stained glass, it was all saved, labelled and stored. But what would the next step be? Would they build something new? A modern version? The answer? No. The plan was clear. The French government promised that Notre Dame would rise again exactly as it was before. No new look, no strange design, the same materials, the same shape. The goal was to bring back the real Notre Dame, not just a copy, but the original, restored with care. And that made the job even harder. Let's start with the spire, the one that collapsed through the burning roof. Designed by Eugène Viollet-le-Duc in the 1850s, it stood 93 meters tall. The spire was built using over 500 tons of oak and covered in lead. Rebuilding it 
meant making an exact copy. But first, they needed trees. Very old trees. So where do you find timber like that today? The answer? France's historic forests. Over 1,000 oak trees were chosen from more than 200 forests across France, including the forest of Bercy and the forest of Troncay. Some of these trees were as old as 230 years. The trunks had to be straight, at least 50 centimeters thick and up to 20 meters long. No curves, no knots. Foresters worked under a tight deadline. The trees had to be cut in the winter of 2021 before the sap started rising. If not, the wood would crack during drying. It was a race against time and nature. From there, the logs were transported to sawmills. They were cut, dried naturally for 12 to 18 months, and then shaped into beams. Each timber had a specific place in the design. Nothing was random. The original 13th century dimensions were used, guided by detailed laser scans and architectural surveys conducted before the fire. These scans, digital twins of the cathedral, became the blueprint for resurrection. Now, the real work began. Carpenters, skilled in ancient techniques, stepped in. Armed with hand axes, mallets, chisels and traditional wooden joinery, not a single metal nail, they carefully rebuilt the huge wooden framework of the nave and choir roofs, known as La Forêt. This forest once had over 1,300 individual beams, many of them more than 800 years old. Sixty master carpenters, including women and volunteers from all over the world, came together to restore it. Workshops across France were alive with activity. Massive trusses, some weighing tons, were put together on the ground. Each one was tested, adjusted, then taken apart and moved to the site. By 2023, cranes began lifting the finished sections high above the Seine. Precision was key. One mistake, and centuries of work would be off by a degree. To celebrate major milestones, flowers were placed atop the highest trusses in January and March 2024, one above the choir, another above the nave. A simple tradition of old, honouring the builders who worked not for fame, but for beauty. But it wasn't just about wood. Fireproofing was just as important. The new roof parts included fire-resistant insulation, misting systems and safety walkways. These features, hidden from view below, were crucial for protecting the future. Meanwhile, inside the cathedral, something incredible was happening. Another team of experts moved in, but what were they doing? Not building walls or fixing windows. They started with cleaning, but not with soap and water. Instead, they used something that looked more like a science experiment, latex paste. Why latex? Because it worked like magic. They brushed it onto the blackened stone walls, waited for it to dry, and then peeled it off like a second skin. The paste pulled away layers of grime, revealing pale limestone underneath. The change was shocking. Some people loved it, others said it looked too clean, too new. Was it losing its old charm, or was it finally shining the way it once did? For the first time in years, sunlight bounced off the bright walls, and carved medieval designs that had been hidden by dirt came back to life. All around the cathedral, the work continued. Experts fixed railings, altars, and tiny mosaic tiles. Statues were brought back to life. Some had been broken, others had melted. Even the gargoyles, those stone sculptures perched above the cathedral, were repaired and returned to their places on the towers. Outside, stonemasons faced their own battles. So what kind of damage were they up against? Hundreds of limestone blocks had been harmed by fire and water. How do you fix something that old and fragile? The answer? Very carefully. New stone was brought in from the same places the medieval builders used, especially in Burgundy and Ile-de-France. Some blocks had to be cleaned by using clay poultices, which pull out harmful salts trapped inside. But there was more to do. The flying buttresses, those giant stone arms that hold up the walls, had carried the building's weight for hundreds of years. Now, they needed help. Steel anchors were added to make them stronger. 
Cracks in the arch ceilings were filled with lime mortar, and the parts that had fallen? Workers rebuilt them stone by stone, using wooden arches to hold everything in place. That's exactly how it was done in the 1200s. And then came the stained glass. Notre Dame's three rose windows are famous all over the world. Each one holds more than 10,000 tiny pieces of glass. Believe it or not, they survived the fire, but they didn't come out untouched. Smoke, heat and lead dust left behind a mess. So, what did the experts do? They carefully took the windows apart. Each piece was cleaned by hand with deionized water, cotton swabs and even scalpels. But a big question came up. Should some of the older repairs, done in styles that don't match, be replaced with new modern art? That debate is still going on today. All the while, another story was quietly taking shape. One built by people, not machines. More than 2,000 skilled workers joined the effort. Stonemasons, blacksmiths, ironworkers, glass artists, roofers, sculptors, historians and even digital engineers. Over 250 companies played a part. And support came pouring in from all over the world. Some gave big, others gave whatever they could. In total, nearly 900 million euro was raised, making it one of the most widely supported cultural restorations in history. But it wasn't just about money. The materials told a story too. More than 1,300 cubic meters of limestone. Over 500 tons of lead to cover the roof. More than 1,200 oak beams. Over 80% of the wood came from forests certified for sustainable use. It was a blend of old skills and new tools. Drones mapped the fire damage. Laser cutters shaped the new pieces. Augmented reality helped workers plan every step. It was a mix of history and high-tech. And in the midst of it all, the spire rose once more. By mid-2023, its wooden frame stood tall once more above Paris. Every sculpture, finial and dormer window returned, just like VLA Le Duc had imagined. By late 2024, the scaffolding came down. And on December 8, 2024, five years and eight months after the flames, the doors of Notre Dame opened once more. But is the work really over? Not yet. Some paintings, chapels and decorations still need repair. Cleaning and fixing will go on through 2026. The goal is not just to rebuild, but to renew. What do you think of Notre Dame's restoration? Share your thoughts below. And don't forget to like, subscribe to Ultimate Mega Builds, and turn on notifications for more amazing stories.